Having said that, that there is quite a lot of you out there, let's have a great round of, a round of applause for Jess. Test, test. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for... Take it um, away. Thank you for a lovely introduction. I appreciate that. Um, and I think Christos said you were going to be a really engaging audience. And did you say they were going to give me the time of my life on this stage? Well, <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Thanks in advance. <laughs> I look forward to that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm Tess. Um, as mentioned, I am uh, head of growth at Atomic Smash, a website performance agency. I work with some very brilliant and inspiring colleagues um, who are experts at working with WordPress and WooCommerce. And I'm going to be using a lot of examples of, of their great work today. Um, I live halfway up a mountain uh, in Wales. I'm actually on top of that mountain in this picture. Um, and on a clear day, you can see over to Bristol, where Atomic Smash is based. Um, uh, I've also been um, heavily involved in the WordPress community for the last um, few years. Um, I was one of the um, organizers of uh, Europe's first Do Action Day, which is uh, a one-day hackathon where volunteers create websites for small local um, charities and nonprofits uh, in a single day. Um, and I was also um, uh, one of the global leads for WordCamp Europe uh, back in 2020. There's plenty more I could tell you about myself, but I'm sure you'll all agree the most important thing is that I'm a dog parent to Hugo, who you can see here. Um, Hugo is an honorary member of the team at the agency I work for and a regular on top of the mountain with me. I would love to talk about Hugo for half an hour, and I'm sure a couple of you actually would quite like that as well, but I've promised to everyone that I'm going to talk about customer experience um, in e-commerce. So firstly, where are we now, um, the state of e-commerce? Well, it's actually uh, quite a, a challenging time for merchants, marketplaces, um, and other businesses working in the e-commerce ecosystem. It's because it, there was such a boom during the pandemic. Um, online shopping jumped 77% just months into the pandemic, um, which was really exciting, uh, but obviously that, that growth has leveled out. Um, so now we need to approach this with an attitude of flexibility, interconnectivity. We need to work together, and this will be hugely important for success. Um, and we should always be thinking about the customer experience and making it as good as possible so that customers don't have to work so hard to shop with the merchants that we serve. Okay, so many of us here today create or sell products or services um, that actually affect people all over the world. Uh, in some cases, for example, when it comes to creating accessible um, or inclusive online experiences, the work we do has a very real impact on whether someone can purchase a product or service or engage with a, web, um, a website or, or a digital experience. So um, it has a real, um, a genuinely really important function, the work we do. And also, the businesses that use our platforms or our services um, rely on us to create um, good experiences as well, So that because their livelihoods um, depend on it if they are merchants. Um, WordPress, obviously, is an open source technology, uh, and the... Um, the platform, the community rather, drives forward the platform. Um, global contributors make WordPress better, obviously, and we come together at events like this so that we can share learnings, we can connect, um, and we can also um, come up with new ideas and new approaches to solve shared challenges and, and, and problems that we, we identify. So the same can be um, um, focused exclusively on e-commerce. So I want to uh, talk about how product businesses, service businesses, and merchants can be more open, transparent, um, and work together to make customer experience as good as it possibly can be, and, and so all of our organizations can thrive. So, in the spirit of sharing, learning, and collaboration, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a program that Atomic Smash is involved with, um, the Woo Experts program. Uh, we're a certified Platinum Woo Expert, and uh, that means we're sort of verified and endorsed by WooCommerce as an agency partner. Uh, I think we're just one of three um, to have that level of, of uh, partnership in the UK. And the Woo Expert program means that we can uh, share learnings, we can represent the needs of our clients to, directly to WooCommerce, we can get extra support, um, we can um, represent their interests and um, we can also access additional resources training resources for our team um, and we can celebrate the success of our team um, as experts as well which is really nice in February, um, WooCommerce invited myself and Atomic Smash's managing director, Piers Tinknell, to uh, attend their division meetup in Vienna, which is kind of like a company conference. And we joined um, their, their agency program manager, Mary, on stage for a fireside chat, where we were able to talk about emerging trends that we are seeing um, in uh, the, eco uh, the ecosystem. We were able to represent the interests, like I said, and the pain points and the needs of our clients on stage and explain to the, the, the WooCommerce 
WooCommerce team how uh, merchants that we're representing are using the platform, which was great. Uh, during the, the chat, um, so, sorry, after the chat, we also had the opportunity to listen to um, a merchant who they'd invited as well. So this was a really nice example of agencies, uh, merchants, and a uh, platform or a product business coming together. Um, because we're talking about sharing and learning, I thought I'd share a couple of things that the merchant um, told us during their fireside chat. Um, so they said that one thing that was extremely important to them was the opportunity to experiment with kind of like buying incentives. So for example, free gifts, and um, to measure how that had an impact on average order value. Um, and then to look at uh, things like unit sales um, and as their main conversion um, point to track, and then how that evolves or changes month on month, year on year, based on the experiments that they're running. Um, in practical terms, it's now easier than ever to share learnings with our peers and our, our partner organizations and our clients because we're instantly and globally connected um, through the internet. So. Um, it's a really great um, opportunity, I think, at an event like this, uh, to see how, what, what works when we collaborate and then mirror that um, when we go home. And hopefully you'll have some ideas for, for how to do that after this talk. Okay, so we can learn from one another in the WordPress space. Obviously, we're all WordPress enthusiasts if we're here. Um, we're a small percentage, actually, of a really global community and even wider um, set of um, people all over the world who use the platform. Um, so let's also think about how we can engage with communities that we are involved with that are outside of the WordPress space. So as mentioned, um, Atomic Smash is in the process of becoming a B Corp. We actually share uh, and learn through that process as well. Um, if you aren't familiar with uh, the process, it's a, a series of sort of checks and balances that, you, uh, that ensure a business not only cares about profit, but also cares about people and the planet. So it, it's a long uh, and, and detailed and, and uh, in-depth process that ensures that a business is doing its part to take care of the world and the people in it. And they also encourage that same openness and tra transparency. So you can share best practices and you can also um, acknowledge that the impact you have on the world relates to your clients, your suppliers, and your organization as well. Uh, another uh, example in the context of shopping experience um, is when we think about returns. Um, PayPal saw the extent of the returns challenge. Um, so 84% of shoppers will avoid a retailer in future if they have a bad returns experience. Um, and so they, in 2021, acquired Happy Returns, which is a software and reverse logistics company, um, to help solve these problems for their online uh, merchants so they can handle returns. And I think that's a really interesting uh, approach where they've looked at, okay, what further down the line, what problems are end users having and how can we um, help to solve that problem? Now, obviously, we can't all acquire lots of other businesses to solve our problems, but we can look at what's going on in the industry more widely and take inspiration from what works. Obviously, a word of warning, I wouldn't just copy everything the big guys are doing. You know, they don't get everything right either. And, you know, I think uh, if you're uh, a leaner uh, team, you actually have the opportunity to innovate more. So uh, take inspiration from the positives, but, but don't follow blindly. Okay, I've been talking at you for a little bit. Obviously, this is a conference talk. I know you expect that, but I'll give you a chance to move slightly now um, and, and engage a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to run through um, these points and ask you as customers, because we're all customers, um, to raise your hand when I get to the one that's most important to you uh, as a consumer. So um, only raise your hand uh, for one, please. So which is the most significant for you? Is it the checkout process? Okay, a few, thank you. Um, is it the returns process? One. Do you know, oh, two, do you know my, that would be my mum's vote, definitely. She absolutely loves a return. Um, okay, what about value for money? Oh, okay, yes, I appreciate that. Yeah, we have a lot of um, people who, who care deeply about the value for money, absolutely. What about ethical values? Okay, and environmental impact? Yes, okay, lovely. And put your hands up if actually you would have loved to have voted for more than one as being extremely significant to you, of course. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's no surprise to me. Many of you put your hands up there and the extent 
honestly, to which all of these matter to us as, as consumers, depends on a lot of external factors and internal values that we hold. Um, but these can change over time, and actually they vary with different contexts too. Um, but they're all important in one way or another. They all contribute to customer experience and the lasting emotion that um, an end user feels when they engage with a brand online and a merchant when they're shopping online. So customer experience is everything, I think. Um, and e-commerce um, brands, I believe, could think a little bit more like um, traditional brick and mortar stores sometimes. If you imagine how they used to build local communities um, in a location where they were going to open a store, I think more can be done to create that lasting positive experience, um, a memorable experience um, to win loyal customers online too. This is especially important at the moment because the rising uh, cost per acquisition rates mean that brands have to place even more focus on um, uh, retention techniques to win loyal customers who will come back again and again so they can maintain profitability. Okay, so together our products, our services and our processes can be designed to help merchants create that ultimate customer experience so that they can enjoy a smooth and convenient buying process and spend their way in a money that feels right and meaningful to them, whether that's to do with value for money, the checkout experience, um, environmental impact or a combination. So why does it matter? Um, well, the... Uh, it matters a lot because so many shoppers go deep into a buying uh, journey um, and then leave before completing a purchase. And actually, research into the checkout experience by the, Ma the, ba the Baymard Institute found that on average, 26% of users um, have abandoned purchases during the checkout flow solely because the checkout flow is too long or too complex. At the same time, research into the world's, largest six, uh, the, the world's 60 largest e-commerce sites uh, revealed the average e-commerce site has 12.8 form fields in their checkout flow. And I'm going to argue that's a lot of extra fields uh, and unnecessary complexity uh, and possible friction to put customers off. So how can we reduce friction at checkout? Well, we can optimize the checkout experience. Um, the checkout is the final hurdle. On this page, you want to have probably as, as few clicks as possible, not to overwhelm the user. Um, fewer steps probably means higher conversion rates, but I'd argue you should um, test that with your target audience. Um, and we also can improve uh, the experience by reducing clutter and reducing um, inputs when they're not necessary. And this is something we did for uh, client Elizabeth Shaw. Elizabeth Shaw has been producing chocolate-based confectionery for more than 140 years, which is a very long history, but they're also looking to the future in a really nice way, and they want to improve the online experience for modern consumers. Um, so they uh, also wanted to improve conversions so that their business is, is profitable and growing. Um, and initially they came to us to merge uh, their WooCommerce shop, their existing WooCommerce shop with their existing uh, WordPress site, and then to um, work through ongoing um, iterative improvements to optimize things like the checkout. So this was the checkout um, before. This uh, is utilizing a plugin uh, and following um, a UX and UI audit, uh, we decided straight away to remove the login step because it's presenting a huge blocker for new customers to make a purchase. Um, the emphasis here is really on existing customers logging in and not even on them making a purchase. Um, so we also thought the styling and the wording of how to to, to skip the, this um, to, the, to go to the next option was confusing and again, we felt it was a detraction from um, getting them through the, the checkout process. So the default um, WooCommerce functionality actually pushes users directly to the second step, which is billing and shipping, with a small prompt for returning users to log in. Um, so it's much, much less intrusive and, um, uh, on new customers or, or on guest checkout. So we kept the plugin, but we uh, mirrored the, um, the WooCommerce default um, uh, way of doing things. And we also combined industry research, customer research, and UX principles to try and understand the objectives of the consumer and to determine exactly how the checkout process should look and feel for them. So one thing we did was we combined um, the first name and last name fields into a, a single text field for name. This is also more inclusive, um, having a first name and last name as a naming convention that's traditionally in the Western culture. Not everyone in the world uses a first name and last name. So it's more welcoming, more appropriate, more inclusive to do this anyway. We also um, made some previously um, 
we made some fields op optional, uh, including the address line 2 and the company name. And you can see they have a minority input now with, with a plus icon. We further reduced in, um, friction by collapsing other uh, fields, such as the gift message, uh, into another minority input. And finally, as the login was such a massive obstruction, we switched to prioritizing guest checkout, as you can see, with an option for uh, returning users to log in at the top. So for customer experience, convenience is obviously a really important piece of the puzzle, and value for money is very important too, as we discovered earlier when you kindly raised your hands. Um, but purchase decisions often take elements, other elements into account too. Um, so for example, more and more modern consumers want to spend their money in a way that matches both their needs and their values. I, I like this quote to, to summarize. Today's consumer not only wants savings and convenience, but also wants to feel good when a company that aligns with their values gets their money. So a great example of this um, is Positive News, uh, the first media organization in the world to focus on uh, quality, independent reporting about what's going right. Um, this is an independent media brand, and it's structured as a community benefit society. So that's a form of social enterprise, and it's a cooperative ownership structure. So uh, the organization is actually owned by um, readers across uh, 33 countries around the world. And its profits are reinvested into creating inspiring journalism for the public benefit. They came to us uh, with an existing WordPress site and that was very slow and unstable and a separate platform for subscriptions uh, that they needed to bring together and improve over time. Their primary goal was to strengthen their funding streams um, by driving more sales, subscriptions and monthly supporters through their site so that they could invest uh, back into um, uh, in creating more and more inspiring journalism. Uh, so we responded with a fully customized WordPress platform and WooCommerce shop um, and an ongoing rollout of additional uh, features and improvements over time. We utilized really powerful reporting um, to develop strategies to improve the, the customer experience and provide more value to the client um, so that we could deliver reliable growth for them. So it was a bespoke WooCommerce shop that enabled customers to sign up to magazine subscriptions, make single purchases, and make donations. Um, we uh, rolled out some digital improvements, such as an intuitive uh, online basket experience. And actually, we saw um, a really nice increase in magazine subscriptions after we did this, um, uh, because we, it was designed to encourage more uh, uh, conversions. And in terms of donations, we introduced an interactive support slider uh, where um, people could use the slider to say how much they wanted to donate um, and this was um, to give a more engaging experience and to generate more recurring donations um, for positive news. Most importantly, I think, we helped Positive News to personalize customer commu communications um, by segmenting their audience uh, with automated tagging determined by customer behavior on their site. Um, so again, making that, that customer experience more personal um, and, and more appropriate. And there were some really nice um, results, some really special results. So uh, page views doubled within the first year of, of working together with this client. Um, there was a 234% increase in turnover from subscriptions uh, within, within the first two years of working together, and 290% um, increase in web visitors over four years of working together. So I'm really proud of the team for what they did and, and their collaboration with, with Positive News on this one. Okay, here's a statistic that shows just how much uh, values matter to most people. Uh, research commissioned by Google Cloud found that 82% of shoppers uh, want a brand's values to align with their own. Now, obviously, values are personal. I can't tell you what any of your values are. Uh, but what I can say is that there's a growing number of, of consumers who have ethical or environmental values that they expect uh, their favorite brands to align with. And they may very well leave if they, if they don't. So we're at a pivotal point, actually, for sustainability in e-commerce. Um, there's an increasing appetite for you know, uh, sustainable product materials, packaging and delivery, uh, plus interest in a circular economy is growing. Many shoppers who want eco-friendly options are actually willing to pay more for them. Um, and according to Global Web Index, 41.8% of shoppers want brands to be socially responsible. Google searches uh, for sustainability increased 63% um, from 2018 to 2021. I'd be really interested to see a more up-to-date stat on that as well and see if it's continuing to rise. Uh, and, in Google, and in a Google survey, 82% of shoppers said that sustainability is more top of mind now than it was before the pandemic. And that, again, that's no surprise to me. 
So the consumer demand for ethical and sustainable choices is there, and it's really up to brands to deliver, and it's up to all of us to help them to do that. Okay, another example to, to go into this point, Picked, um, an organic fruit and veg box supplier. Um, we took on their existing WordPress and WooCommerce site to get it working harder for them. Part of that was to show their USPs and key values um, in, a, in a way that's more clear to their target audience and, and that demonstrates benefits to those consumers. So we identified areas of the site to do this uh, on the homepage, for example, and we also identified uh, ways that the homepage could continue to be effective without overloading people um, in terms of their limited time or attention. Um, one thing we did was added a visual how it works process. Um, so this communicates information more transparently and more easily, um, which matches the way that um, PICT want to get their messages across being very transparent and honest about the way they do business. Um, we rolled out consistent layouts for like product cards um, to reduce visual clutter, to try and eliminate, in, eliminate unnecessary cognitive load, and to improve cohesion. Um, lots of other things like imp improving um, the use of CTAs, um, and also using the navigation bar for a flexible place to um, share really important information. So this could be um, order um, countdowns and order window countdown, um, important delivery updates, uh, seasonal announcements, um, and then also things such as promotions, USPs, values, if they are the most important things to, um, to cover at the time. Here's an example of uh, a section of the homepage that shows their USPs to their target audience. Uh, it demonstrates some of the core values that are not just important to pick, but also crucial um, for, those, for those consumers. You can see the likes of like fast, free and fast delivery, um, there's fair pricing, there's optional subscriptions, and all of this caters to that, that convenience and the value for money side of things. But on the other hand, we also include the things like certified organic, uh, plastic free, and B Corp. These things like, things like great relationships with their supply chain are very important for their target audience and align with their consumers' core values. So all of these together contribute to the experience and emotion when a customer is interacting with a brand. Okay, and it's not just uh, when transactions through a web store are linked to uh, profits that this is important. Um, we also used WooCommerce to put on a charity auction um, for uh, Bristol Children's Hospital charity, The Grand Appeal. And this is a website that's a critical part of the charity's income stream. Um, it helps them to support um, a, a hospital that, that works with, or cares for rather, 100,000 patients per year. Um, so this is uh, an example of using WooCommerce um, to raise money for a good cause. Um, customer experience, however, should still be the highest priority. People are still giving you their money um, and giving the charity or the client their, their money. And helping, to make that, helping them to make informed purchasing decisions is still really, really important. In fact, you could argue that actually it's, it's more important for an organization that's using the money like this. Um, so, for example, the uh, Grand Art Auction enables supporters to bid on artworks uh, donated by local communities and artists. Um, each auction page contains um, additional uh, information that's really key to the purchasers, uh, uh, the bidder's um, purchase decision. Um, so, for example, there's, a, there's tabs in each product page to inform the user of things like UK shipping costs, because this is a UK-based organization, as well as like the option for some personalized international uh, shipping options for, for people who are uh, bidding from abo abroad. There's also important dates during the auction. Obviously, that's really important for an auction. Timeframes were clear across you know, the home page, the product pages, and the, the auction page itself. So when funding streams, like I say, are this important, and in this case, helping to save lives, uh, it's even more uh, crucial to create an experience whereby bidders, uh, donors, or supporters feel good about the way they're using their money, and they want to come back and spend their money with this uh, brand or this charity again um, during the next campaign. So when it comes to improving customer experience, we shouldn't be guessing. Uh, I know probably all of us, like, we really believe our intuition, but in this case, you know, we need to put ourselves um, in the, the consumer's shoes, and that's impossible to do without without data. So when we can use website data, um, which plays a pivotal role in enhancing that um, customer experience. 
We can analyze how uh, user behavior, we can analyze user behavior rather um, to um, help businesses gain valuable insights um, to make uh, in, uh, decisions based on customers' preferences, their needs, their pain points. Um, and they can leverage this data to help them um, understand their customers, uh, optimize the e-commerce experiences um, in a targeted, uh, customized way, um, and make them more intuitive and effective. It also means if there's bottlenecks, if there's obstacles or friction points, these can be identified and roadmaps can be developed um, to roll out improvements to, to solve these, hopefully. Um, implement, implementing improvements obviously can create things like a smoother navigation, better user flow, better user experience, higher conversion rates, and ultimately create that better customer experience that ensures that consumers come back time and time again um, to improve overall business performance. Okay, an example of this um, uh, in terms of data, using data in a better way. Um, we work with Oxygen Free Jumping, um, who has um, indoor activity parks, and they've expanded to, I think they have five in the UK. Um, and their strategic objective um, at the moment is uh, all around, um, they have ambitious growth targets, so they want to increase revenue in line with that. Um, but they had, at the time, a black hole of data in their sales funnel. So this prevented them from implementing effective CRO strategies um, to build you know, incremental improvements to make their site better because they had no data to, to rely on. They had data, but it got lost as soon as someone clicked to book. So throughout the sales funnel, they couldn't see anything. So we worked through a series of initiatives to improve visibility uh, at, of key data and, and improve um, the UX and conversion funnel. This included designing and building a more intuitive, uh, easy to use online booking system and allow users to book um, with as minimal clicks as possible. Okay, so Oxygen now has um, flexibility, uh, visibility throughout the sales funnel and they can use that data to inform future business decisions. For example, how to price products um, accurately, how to um, identify or fix drop-off points during that process, that booking process. Um, and we're helping them to use ongoing data analysis to support business growth, in term, uh, interpret um, that sales funnel analytics, and to improve things like average order value, which is a really important one for them. And so far, the uh, results include an 11.6 uh, improvement in conversion rate. So really happy with that so far. Okay, I've used a handful of case studies, obviously, to prove my points today. Um, thank you for listening whilst I, I did all of that. Um, and I've been able to do that because Atomic Smash has some really good processes in place uh, that ensure that we can make iter iterative improvements and res uh, results-driven uh, approaches to uh, improve WordPress and WooCommerce sites, um, building out strategies that you know, rely on data, that we can test um, and we can rely on. Um, and that uh, results-driven approach um, is something that I really want to see more of in, in terms of customer experience. Um, it helps our clients to grow and it ensures that the end user gets what they, what they want as well. All right, so hands up if you learn absolutely nothing today. <laughs> okay, no, oh, you're all very kind, thank you. Hands up if you did learn something. Okay, and hands up if um, you now have maybe an idea, you're going to go talk to someone, or when you get back to your desk after WordCamp Europe, there's something that you, it's provoked an idea that you want to explore further. Okay, that's my favorite one, I think. You can't argue with that. That's, that's the best one. Um, so that's all from me. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. Way to go, Tess. That was impressive. Thank Let's you. get a great round of applause for Tess. That's hard. It's hard to get up here and actually do all this stuff. Come on. Come on. Come on, everyone. I don't even know if you guys can hear me. I think it's better now, right? All right. Well, Tess, that was amazing. Oh, thank you. I think I forgot to mention that you were involved with WordPress Europe in the past as well as a global lead. Yes, yeah, WordCamp Europe, yeah. So you were yeah. a global lead as well? In the past, but there's some very, uh, very talented global leads now who are very thankful for putting on this event. And it'll be really interesting actually to see um, if uh, how WordCamp Europe evolves. And if any of you are interested in, in organizing that in the future, um, there's going to be a, a call for organizers at the end of the closing remarks. So I definitely encourage you to get involved if that's something that's interesting to you. Yeah, wonderful. Great. So I do have a quick question, or like I have maybe two questions. Mm -hmm. My first question is, considering you do so much work for your clients in the, that sense, how do you prioritize them? I mean, oh, are there a lot? The I mean, there's probably a lot. Uh, just going off your examples, there are a lot. Yeah, so I think the work is very varied, um, and the way that we prioritize is we'd work 
we'd, we'd delve really deep into the needs of the client, right. and we'd try and identify the work that's going to provide the, the most value for them with the least effort required. So it'll be the most value in terms of how it will affect their business, but it also will be you know, the most cost-effective approach. Um, so we're always trying to do it in, in the cleverest way um, so we can make the biggest change for, for the, in the least time or effort possible. All right. Wow. And the uh, second question, let's say I'm your client. Okay. Because uh, I might have an e-commerce website. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I come to you. I have all these problems. We sit down, we consult. I understand that every situation is completely different. But mm -hmm. if I had like a mom and pop shop kind of thing going on, what, uh, how much time do you think it would take for us to start? I know it's a crazy question. But like, let's say I'm at zero. Oh, I have absolutely no idea. It's like, how long is a piece of string? I think that's a good question because it's a question that a lot of merchants will ask. They'll always ask, like, how long is this going to take? Um, and actually, it really depends on the, the requirements that they have. You know, what are their ambitions? How complex is their e-commerce site? Um, are there integrations? Is it, you know, multi-site? Like, is it international? If it's a mom and pop shop, um, I know that WooCommerce have some really um, nice ways to get started that's more that's simpler and quicker, okay. uh, that actually you might not need an agency for if it's like not as complex. Um, but the more complex sites, you know, you're going to be working on them either iteratively and ongoing or for a really, you know, intense period of, of months and months and months. Um, because it, it's, a, it's wow. a big job to get it right. All right. So your agency is way too big for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Does the audience have any questions? Does anyone want to ask any questions? Oh, uh, please, you, ma'am, you were first. So I'm oh, hang oh, on. There's wait, a mic coming your way. Microphone. I'm just going to wait for the mic for a sec. If you want, you can talk and I'll repeat it so that everyone can hear. Oh, here comes the mic. Great. There we go. Thank you. So I'm really interested in the example you gave. I think it was the magazine, perhaps, mm -hmm. of that obviously they're selling subscriptions, but I believe they were making donations as well. Yes. And you mentioned like the slider that mm -hmm. folks could use. So first question is, is that native WooCommerce functionality or did Atomic Smash have to custom code that? And second question, I'm really interested in the efficacy of that donation strategy. So did you see an improvement in donations? Did people donate more because of the fun interactivity of it? Yeah, so the idea actually for that one was to try and uh, generate more recurring donations. Um, so it was, I think, a shift in um, the way that they were thinking about how to, to get supporters. They really wanted people to support them over time, of course, uh, like so many nonprofits do. Um, I believe it was custom code, uh, but I'll double check that and, and get back to you. Um, and I know that the, the I can't give you the exact results off the top of my head, but it, it made a significant improvement and, and everyone was really happy with that. Um, and it's been great to work with, with an organization like that and, and to watch them grow over the, over the years. Um, and uh, yeah, we're really, really happy to work with, with organizations that do good and that we can help do more. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Wonderful. Was there a question um, down here? This sir had a question right here. Hi, I want to ask you, do you agree with the sentence that customers hate filling the forms? Sorry, please, could you repeat? Uh, could you agree or not? Uh, customers hate filling the oh. forms. <laughs> Do I agree that customers hate filling in forms? I think most people don't really like filling in forms. And now I've got, as a customer, if I put myself, I'm talking about myself, when I answer a form on my phone, if it doesn't like already know like my name, my email address, my surname, I get really frustrated. Exactly to that. Yeah. Uh, in one example, you mentioned that you combine uh, first name and last name, ah, yes. and how to deal with the out of fill. Um... Yes, that's a really good point. So actually, in this case, it wouldn't auto fill f f for me. Um, however, I think sometimes you need to look at the, you know, 
the in inclusion and make um, uh, decisions balanced uh, with you know, customer experience and inclusion. And actually, how important is that inclusivity going to be over time? You know, is, is it going to outweigh the, the speed and convenience of, of autofill? And in this case, we decided for this client, definitely it would. Um, I think it's probably a good idea to do it case by case. Um, but I think you know, if, you, if you have a decision um, to make and you're going to be able to make something more accessible or inclusive, that's probably the best way to go. OK, thanks. Thank you for your question. One more. We have a question right over here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Do you mind oh, no, 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 please. Yes, sure. yes of course. Uh, hello, thank you for such a presentation. Um, could you please tell uh, what may be measurement uh, or analytics instruments are you using to grab the statistics and uh, yeah. improve the funnels? Yeah, so obviously we use Google Analytics um, and move everyone to like GA4. Um, so definitely if, if you have clients who aren't yet on GA4, um, it's definitely, it's time, like time's running out actually to, to move that over. So I'd recommend that. But we also really encourage um, the use of Motoric to our clients. We think it's like a really, really excellent tool uh, for e-commerce. Um, and yeah, if any of you have e-commerce clients that aren't utilizing Motoric, I, I definitely say give it a go. Um, it gives really, really like detailed insights that, that our clients find really valuable and we're really happy um, to be able to use that together with them to, to come up with those, with those insights. Um, also, if the client is you know, more complex, they might have integrations with something like Salesforce. Um, so there'll be other ways to, to gather analytics as well um, using those tools. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tess. I really enjoyed that and Thanks. big fan of Atomic Smash. Um, it's been amazing to hear about those examples of wins for customers. I wonder if you could share off the top of your head a story of maybe where you worked with a client and you, you had a, a big learning from something that didn't go wrong that agencies or all of us could learn from. In your oh, time. absolutely. I'd say one thing that's, that's really difficult is if you have a really big and complex e-commerce pro uh, project, no matter how uh, experienced the team is, it's always going to be so hard to get it right first time. Um, so actually, you might, I would suggest a better approach is to try and do um, a kind of MVP if you can, if your client will be happy with that, and then have iterative uh, additional um, rollouts of, of different features. Um, because there's been, yeah, absolutely, it's really hard to get everything right first time. Um, off the top of my head, is there something that I can share that's been really, really challenging working with a client? Uh, yes, obviously, if you're working with money, right? This is really high stakes, and most of these clients that I'm talking about, they take all their um, revenue through their, not all of them that I've given examples for, but most of the clients we work for are taking their revenue through their uh, site exclusively. So if something goes wrong with payments, actually, uh, if there's something insecure, that could be, you know, really, really, really terrible. So you have to, that's a big um, thing that you have to take a lot of care around. Um, so finding like a payment uh, platform or gateway that you can rely on, uh, secure, um, that's really important. So I, I would definitely highlight that in terms of e-commerce as being a really big challenge that we, we face all the time. Thanks for your question. Oh, uh, go ahead, please. Um, I have a question about the auto address filling. Mm -hmm. um, some users using from Google, for example, what is your opinion about it? Is it is like to get more faster checkout than before? What's your opinion about it? Yeah, I think it's a good idea, and usually we recommend to clients to use the um, a system where it can it can autofill or like help you uh, generate your your um, address using like the postcode. Um, again, I, I would use um, some of those those tools rather than you don't necessarily need to, to, to do it all yourself. You can, um, if there's a tool that already works um, or you can do, you know, Google, that's, you know, making things simpler, quicker, hopefully. Um, and I, I usually, yeah, would recommend that. And I know my, my uh, team members usually would as well. However, I would say uh, one other thing is always important to review the decisions you're making and what you're saying to your clients um, over time, because things change, things shift really fast in technology and uh, in terms of, say, accessibility, accessibility best practices. So it's a really good idea to take time to review what you're doing, what recommendations you're making, and um, ensure that you're still happy with those recommendations as time goes on. Wonderful. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, you're impressive. I, 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 don't ah. know. I can't really say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so kind. Um, yeah, so that's time. And uh, could we get a final, like, it's a big round of applause here for Tess. Come on, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>
There we go. Thank you.